So at this point, everyone has a document, a Google Doc. That's where you're collecting your images, your bulleted information, your research. The second step of the expert group investigations is the presentation. So the group member who took the lead on creating the document, so you shared it with all the other members of your class, might be the best person to start the Google presentation. How many people in here, raise your hand, have ever worked with PowerPoint or Keynote? Okay, so this actually functions a lot like PowerPoint. So what you're going to do is create, click, uh, click create. You're going to choose presentation, which is the one with the yellow icon. You're going to give it the proper name before you share it with anybody so that they know what's coming their way. No, before you give it a name, you actually have to choose your theme. So you can choose whatever theme you like, but what I would say is just be cautious. As I scroll down, you're going to see some themes that are a little bit um, uh, crazy and maybe a little distracting. So I would choose a simple theme, um, and then you can all, maybe modern. I use Simple Light for the ones that I do for your vocabulary recordings, and then I actually add that blue colored bar that you guys see at the top of each of them, just as kind of a splash of color. So what's kind of fun, so once you start it, you want to go ahead and title it. And you want to put your class name, hyphen, last names, plural, and then expert group investigation. Then whatever your topic is, so I know. So you're going to create it. And then you're going to share it, right? So you want to share it with the other members of your group so that they can edit it, right? So you're going to add, enter their email addresses right here. You're going to make sure it says can edit. And then you're going to share and save. Once you've shared, yeah, I realize. Once you've shared and saved, you guys can start working on the document. Now, if you choose a really plain power or presentation mode, their theme, that's fine. My suggestion would be feel free to play around with color, though. So if you want to create like a little, not like that. If you want to create a text box, so click T. This is actually what you would do if you're going to type something. You can create your text box. And then you can fill it. See this can of paint right here? This is what I do with the vocabulary. So let's say you want it to be red. You could replicate this on each slide. You can add slides by just clicking an additional slide and then just copy and paste if you have some kind of icon or some color splash that you want to use. Um, they have you know, the preset places where you can add text, but you can get rid of those. You can customize text, add your text box here. You can choose the font size. Rule of thumb, no less than 30 font, no less, okay? We don't want small font. We want font that people can read from the back of the room without straining their eyes. Um, and a tip, no more than 10 slides of content. You guys are only going to be up here for five to seven minutes probably as a group. So I don't want like 20 slides full of pictures. It's just too much for people to sit through because we're going to have a couple presentations per day. And I'll have your due dates on the, web, on the class website. So when you're on your slides, you can insert images. So you've taken screenshots as you've been researching. If you've been right clicking and saving to your computer, you can grab those, choose your image, and upload them. What do you need to do if you use an image, someone with a hand? Yusenia? You want to give the artist credit, right? So you want to put the URL directly underneath the image. And how big is that URL going to be? Enormous, right? So we want to use the Google shortener. We want the little one. And then your last slide will be your citation slide. And I will give you more information on the class website about how to properly cite each of your photographs so you're giving complete credit. So you can choose an image, upload images. Um, rule of thumb, really, use as little writing as you possibly can. We want, you know, images. I want, but you know, you can bullet point stuff. But where should most of the information be? In your head. In your head, okay? So we don't want to explain it all on the PowerPoint we want you to have things that will help you remember what you need to talk about, but it should be coming from your head, right? Things you remember. You can make notes down here. So as a group, if you want to highlight certain things, use this note-taking feature. You won't see it when you're presenting, 
but you can use it as you work together. If multiple people are on the document at the same time, up in this area, you'll see those colored squares and you can instant message, you can have a conversation about what you're doing, you can work on the same slides. A note, it might be helpful if you just had each person's name under the slide or slides that they're responsible for. That way you, you have a sense of, okay, this is the topic I'm gonna cover, these are my slides. Are there any questions about how to get this done, things you might wanna do, have to do for this presentation piece? And it saves automatically. Every update people make in your group, it saves automatically. And each version is saved automatically as well.